I was tired of large language models giving me outdated code. So I built something better, an AI agent that scrapes the latest documentation and helps me write code in real time. But this isn't just a normal chatbot. It's a full on rag system that stays current, understands my requests, and actually builds with me. In this video, I'll show you exactly how it works and how to build your own. And just before we dive in, this video is sponsored by Scraper API. They reached out to show me their API for scraping data and wow, it's amazing. So with that, let's go ahead and dive into the video. All right, so I already have some things set up. I have a main.py file that just talks to three different endpoints, which is our ask, our fetch, and our scrape. If we look, ask just prints ask endpoint, fetch just prints fetch endpoint, and scrape just prints scrape endpoint. We have a model, which is gonna be our model that we're gonna ask our new AI agent. And then we have our clients, which builds our own Chroma DB, which is what we're gonna be using for our vector database. Now, one thing you'll notice is that we have our open AI API key right here. If we go ahead and we look inside our .env file, we have our OpenAI API key, which is gonna be the key for OpenAI. And then we have our Scraper API API key. Now this is going to be our API key that allows us to be able to work with Scraper API. Now a quick heads up, if you've never used Scraper API before, it's a super simple way for us to be able to scrape different websites only using a single API and they have an amazing free trial. So go ahead and just sign up and then you can go ahead and start following this video. Now, here's a perfect example for how we can build this. Now, Langchain is a super popular AI agent application and that's the framework that we're gonna be using in this video. Now, the documentation is always super updated, but because it's a newer framework, current LLMs and different coding models don't have the updated information. So what we're gonna do is we are going to look at python.langchain.com slash sitemap.xml. Now, this is where we can see all of the URLs for our docs inside our Langchain. This is literally everything they have for Langchain right here, and it just prints out all the URLs that make this up. What we're gonna do is we're gonna scrape all of these websites, get all of the data, embed it, save it to our vector database. And then when we ask questions, we'll be able to retrieve this information and it's going to show us the exact source and where it created the data. So let's go ahead and just copy this URL right here. And let's go back into our scrape.py. Now here we can see that we have a default value of sitemap URL, add URL here to scrape. We're just gonna add that here. Now, when we actually run our endpoint, we could type in you know any sitemap we want, but we're gonna just type that in here, just to make it a little easier because it's gonna be automatically defaulted to that sitemap when we run the API endpoint. All right, so the very first thing that we're gonna to wanna to add here in our API endpoint is we are gonna add a little bit of code all right, so what we did here was we went ahead and we are printing our sitemap so we can just see what sitemap we're passing in. And then we're running our fetch scraper API, which we haven't yet created, which is going to allow us to scrape any website and be able to populate it. We have our parse the text responses to extract the URLs. We then need to handle the concatenation of the URLs, which is split by the common patterns that separates URLs. So when we get all this data back, we'll kind of have it all as a single string with commas. We have some pattern detection happening right here. So we're gonna look for the patterns, find any matches, and then just make sure that all the URLs are actually unique. And then remove all the frequency of suffix like weekly, daily, et cetera. And then we also need to look at the regular URLs for the fallback so we can skip URLs that are already captured in the patterns above. And then finally, we wanna make sure all the URLs are unique before we start extracting the domain for source identification. And we'll kind of get to each one of these in a little bit. Now, one of the first things we wanna do is go ahead and look at our fetch scraper API. So let's go ahead and create this. Now, like I said before, scraper API allows us to do this very, very, easily. So inside here, let's go ahead and just create a new folder called service. And then inside here, we're going to create a new file called scrape underscore service dot pi. Now inside here, we need to add from Langchain scraper API our scraper API tool, which you can install by doing a pip install of our Langchain dash scraper API. Now, once you're inside here, we just created our fetch scraper API, which takes in a URL, and then we can output it in a certain format. So we have our tool of scraper API, and we're gonna pass in the URL. Our output format for this time is gonna be text. The next time we're gonna be using markdown, and then we're just gonna return that response. So right here, we just need to make sure that we add this as an import now. And then all of a sudden we have our entire content for that site. So what that's going to do is get everything inside of our sitemap. So right here, we're extracting it out, finding all the URLs. We can remove these RE underscores by just adding this import, which stands for regular expressions. 
and then we want to be able to use our URL parse. So we can come back up here and also import URL lib.parse and then import our URL parse, which again will allow us to extract the domain for source identification. And then after this is where we really want to start diving in. So right here we have our processed each URL and store into a Chroma DB. We'll do that by creating a new list of processed docs. And then we're going to loop through every unique URL, which is the URL inside the sitemap. We're then going to process that URL, fetch all that data right here. We can see we're using fetch scraper API, but this time we're calling markdown. And then we're going to continue and extract the markdown and then add it inside our Chroma DB. And let's go ahead and fill out these new functions. So right here, we have this extract markdown content that we can go ahead and add right here into our scrape service. So right here, I will just add this function. And again, we're going to need to import RE. So what we're doing right here, we are extracting and processing the markdown content. We're going to set the title to just untitled for right now. And then our lines is going to equal our markdown content dot split. So we're going to start splitting out all of the lines. And then we're going to go through all the lines and start creating that content that we really need to be able to add to our Chroma DB. So we need to get the content from the title onwards and then clean up the content by using regular expressions. And then here's when we want to split all the data into chunks. And chunks is how we're going to be properly saving this into a Chroma DB. It allows us to make these vector embeddings fairly easy. And then we just want to return all that data, but we're going to have to write the code for the chunk content. So right above our extract markdown content and right under our fetch scraper API, I'm going to add this code for our chunk content. And what again, what this does is it splits the text into chunks with overlap, which takes in three arguments, the text that needs to be split, the number of words per chunk and the number of words to overlap. And then here we can see that we're going to add the chunk size and then subtract our overlap. So we know exactly how much we need to cut out and then just return those chunks. And since we're going to be using a list, we're going to want to come up here and just add the from typing import our list. Perfect. All right, let's go back to our scrape API where we can now get all the documentation that we need. And now we just need to loop through the documentation for the enumeration and simply save it to our collection, which is going to be our Chroma DB. We need to add our collection and our timestamp. So let's go back up here and just add these as imports. And everything else is going to look really, really good. So just to try it out, let's go inside here and say uvacorn app dot main colon app dash dash reload. Let's go ahead and run our application. I'm going to go back in here. I already have it up under localhost port 8000. And right here, we need to scrape all of our data. And you can see that if we say try it out. We can change the URL. But since we have it as default, it's automatically going to go to that. Now let's go ahead and click execute. Now, if we go back to the code, we can see that it's found 1,568 URLs. And we're going to go through this entire 1,568 URLs and embed all of that documentation, add it to our vector database, and then our AI RAG agent is going to be able to use that data to create a coding assistant bot for us. And I'll come back to the video once this is all complete. All right, so what we can do now once it's all complete is we can go into our fetch.py and I'm just going to overwrite some of this functionality, which is going to allow us to be able to get all of the data out of our vector database. So if we go ahead and we just overwrite that, add the import that we're missing for our collection. Now if we just go ahead and rerun our application, go back inside here and we say fetch all the data and we say execute. We can see that we get a success of 3,335 pieces of data. And here is all of the documentation that we just embedded and saved inside our Chroma DB. This is awesome stuff. Now what we want to do is go ahead and create a LangChain agent that's going to be able to work with that data for us to have a RAG application. So let's go into our services and create a new file called agentservice.py. Now, the first thing we are going to do here is add a Chroma DB retriever. Now, this code defines a custom retriever class for our Chroma DB, which is used to fetch the relevant data from our Chroma DB collection based on the query. So here's a quick breakdown of what each part is doing. We have our class Chroma DB retriever, which inherits the base retriever, which comes from our lang chain. We have a Chroma DB collection object, which is used to perform the queries that we need to do. And then K is representing the number of documents to retrieve for each query, and we're defaulting to 10. 
Now this first method of get relevant documents, now this purpose is to retrieve the top K documents from the Chroma DB collection that, that are most relevant to the input query. So it calls the Chroma DB's query method with the input query and asks for the top results that match what we're asking. And then checks if any documents were returned. For each document and its associated metadata, we need to create a document object, and then we need to add each document to a list. We then need to come down here and create a rag chain. Now this function sets up a retrieval augmented generation, which is ag pipeline using Langchain and OpenAI. And here's the breakdown of what it's doing. We first initialize an OpenAI chat model, and we specifically are using GPT-40 with a temperature of zero. We then need to create our custom retriever. This instantiates our custom Chroma DB retriever that we just showed, which will fetch the top 10 relevant pieces of documents. And then we need to create our retrieval chain. Now this sets up a retrieval chain from Langchain. This uses an LLM to answer our questions, uses our retrieval to fetch the relevant documents from our Chroma DB. The chain type equals stuff. <laughs> this means it's it will simply concatenate the retrieved documents and pass them to the LLM on our behalf. And then the return source documents equals true. This means the chain will also return the documents if used to answer the question. This allows us to be able to return the sources. And then lastly, we need to add one more function, which is our ask rag agent. Now this function is responsible for answering the user's question. We need to create the rag chain, which calls the create rag chain function, which we just showed earlier. We need to invoke the chain with the user's question, which passes the user's question to the chain. The chain then retrieves the relevant documents from the Chroma DB and uses the LLM to generate the answer. We then need to extract the answer and source documents and then extract the URLs from those source documents. So then for each source document, we need to check if it has metadata and try to extract that URL field so we can return a list called sources, which is gonna be all the sources that's going to generate the input for the user. So what we wanna do now is jump into our ask.py, add this new service of our ask rag agent, and then simply add it right here. So now if we go back into our terminal and we run our application, and we go back to our Chrome. I'm going to refresh just to make sure everything's up to date. And I come over here and say, create me a simple chatbot. And we say execute. It's going to load. It's going to be fetching all of our documents. It's going to be using the RAG capability. And it's going to be really trying to find the perfect solution to the question being asked, which is very uh, generic of create me a simple chatbot. But we have so much information from Langchain that's going to really make this possible. And if we scroll down, we can see the answer um, to create a simple chatbot. You can use chat open AI. It's going to talk about some different packages and then it's going to show all of the sources that got this information. Now, if we want to make this just one step even better, we can add a UI, which is going to be Streamlit. So what we can do is just stop this, say pip install Streamlit, get Streamlit installed into our application, restart our fast API application. And now let's go ahead and create a new terminal, which is going to be running the streamlet. Start that up. And now we have our entire coding documentation assistant right here, where we can say, create me a chatbot. It's going to be running. And here we go. It's going to show us all the code on how we can set up our environment, choose our language model, define the chatbot's behavior, and then run the chatbot. And if we click this little box, it's going to show us all of the view sources. And this is all built using Streamlit. So I hope you were able to learn something new about how we can scrape data using Scraper API, be able to populate an AI agent using RAG capabilities, and create something super modern and super awesome. So I hope you were able to learn something, and I'll see you in the next video.